Can I interest you in a strategic game that you can play with your kids and have about the same odds of winning and losing against them? I have one just for you. What's up everybody? Welcome to the life of a board gamer. My name is Daniel and today we are going to take a closer look at the game called Battle of Gog. It is a game uh, with a pretty big box that comes in play for a reason. It is that big for a reason. It is used for setup of the board. Very interesting. So let me show you how that works and then we'll talk some more about it. Okay, usually I already set up the game and everything, but setup for this game is so unique and different and interesting that I wanted to be included in the video. Basically, uh, you will use uh, the box as itself, so the front side and uh, the back side, uh, will, uh, you will be using this as a map. As you can see, there are some lines over on over here. That's very interesting thing. So, and it explains you a little bit about the game and everything as the games usually do. But basically, each of the players will start in one of the corners. We are going to set up the game for four players. And uh, players will roll three of their dice, each of the players. And who, whoever rolled the sm uh, smallest amount when you gather all the dice will be the starting player. And uh, you will pick one of the tiles. And as you can see, tiles have all kinds of different things on them. They have like a, uh, some uh, food, some wood forests, and some uh, ruined... Uh, towers that you can hide in and get some defense and basically what you do you can put it anywhere on the board inside the square itself so just for example let's say i want to put it over here or like i don't know it's really good tile so you can rotate it however you want i will put it here so i can gather some food on my turn maybe stuff like that and then the other player is going to go and he's going to play i don't know let's say over here and uh, you if you pull another tile with the water when there is already a water you need to connect those water in any way you can so i need to put it like this and basically you will do this uh, in a player turn order once all of these tiles are placed uh, you will start the game and uh, as you can see the map will look different each time you play it so i will just fast forward now while i put these uh, on the board and then i'll explain how the game works and everything okay so basically that is that that's how you set up the board so some of the waters will end up like alone because i at the moment when i was putting the tile there was no water that i can connected it to otherwise i would have to so each of the players will roll three of their workers and they will put him put them in the corner of the board and as you can see there is two type of dice a small and a big one the big one represents cities because you can build cities in this game and the smaller one, these, these represent your soldiers that will roam around and fight each other, stuff like that. So basically, we are now going to roll these guys and just put them one in each corner. Let's do it like so. And now I'm just doing this randomly. Of course, you would be more strategic when you see your resources and everything that you are surrounded by. You would choose more wisely. I'm just doing this to show you how the game works by by itself so this is what happens okay so now we have soldiers in each of the corner there is also two guy there's also these two angel of retribution and a gog the guy from the board that like these little two minis and they will start in the center of the board and once you will uh, roll you will roll these dice on your turn and e each time each player is, it's their turn they will roll these dice and depending what they get on these dice is these guys will probably move or not and you will be able to move and build stuff and do all kinds of different things what else we have in a game we have three types of resources that we will be using for building cities for buying scrolls for buying power cards uh, expanding our granary to store more resources so we have a food we have a wood and we have like a gold coins or gems or whatever it is and uh, over here this is just like a little cheat sheet uh, how much costs to buy units at what level so you can buy them at level one and then upgrade them gradually or if you have like a bunch of resources you can instantly buy like more advanced soldiers 
and the, the soldier is more advanced as the dice has the bigger number so number one is like super not advanced soldier and number six is very tough guy so these cards you will use because uh, to mark how much of each resource can you store because at the start of the game you can store five resources then you have six and then you have seven that's the max that you can store there is also these cards that will uh, as you can see it is a lovely lovely art artwork and uh, all of these cards are explained in the rule book but they will give you some special power like extra movement i mean what else would horse represent but extra movement or uh, all kinds of different things uh, so this will uh, help you or your guys uh, win in combat stuff like that so these are like special abilities that only you will have and there is also these cards that you can play throughout the game and these cards have some positive or negative effects and you will roll the dice to see who gets the positive or negative effect and if it's negative you can choose to ignore it if it lands on you so you can lose resources or gain resources gain scrolls uh, all kinds of different things so you can upgrade your armies or uh, kill your armies all there is really a bunch of different things going on with these decks which is absolutely awesome and basically on your turn you will roll these dice and these dice will tell you how many movement points you have and if you roll double depending which double you rolled one of these guys will move and in this case the black one is the good guy actually he will bring you some positive effects and this one if it he the angel of retribution if he stands besides your city he will give you some negative effect so you really want to stay away from this one and go for this one if possible but uh, rolling the dice basically gives you movement and now what you can do is move with your armies uh, through you can move with your armies through through the through the map itself and trying to claim different resources and uh, uh, until you build all three cities all your armies can go through a water uh, freely but once you have three cities on the board uh, you will be uh, you will need more advanced armies level three or more to go through the water and if it happens so that level three goes to level two while it's in the water and you have three cities on the board he will drown because he's not experienced enough and uh, yeah uh, what you will be doing on your turn you will be moving you will be founding cities for example let's say that blue founded a city of course you will always start with level one city on the board so once you founded the city you can collect the resources that are surrounding this city so you can go through these cards if you are uh, in a one space around the city uh, with this chest uh, there is two woods forest spaces over here which will collect me two wood and if i would play it like so this will just give me one wood this is like one big forest and i will get one wood from this if i would uh, put a city here i will get gold and food so let's say that i found that city here because it gives me all three resources which is absolutely perfect and once you upgrade your city to a level two you can count all the spaces that are two around the city and collect all the resources but after that uh, putting it on a three or four does not expand your reach area it just gives you an ability to defend better against attacks from other players because other players will try and attack your city or if they stay on the resources they will block your resources but also if you stay on these resources that is that are outside the city you can collect those with your soldiers and uh, yeah you will be running around the board there is uh, three different things that can happen to trigger the end game scoring that is if you manage to uh, spawn four uh, soldiers in each corner of the board so if you have each corner of the board covered with one of your soldiers you automatically win uh, also another uh, thing that uh, is uh, that you can win by is if you collect all these scrolls and uh, uh, i do have to stress out that these are all prototype components i forgot to say that so some rules might change some cards might get changing how they work stuff like that so be aware of that so yeah uh, basically if you get these scrolls if you if you have uh soldiers in each of the corners or if you manage to destroy each other city in a game if all other players are wiped out you win the game of course and uh, basically that is that you will be populating this map you will be fighting each other's uh, there is some uh, the fighting is pretty simple the fight is super easy so let's say for example 
that this number four and number two is are fighting and uh, of course you can't attack uh, the higher number because how the fight works basically what it happens i say that i attack level two and what happens i just remove this guy from the board and i lower myself for however strong he was if he was a three i would be a one and that is that and then when it's my turn i can spend resources to upgrade my soldiers so these soldiers can be again upgraded to level four or five or six or how wherever you want to upgrade them the six is the max of course and you will be roaming around these boards and uh, you will be trying to win this game uh, in any of those three different things quick little uh clarification of the rules uh, when i rolled when i set up the game you just roll three dice to see who goes first but but all of you start with three level one soldiers so these soldiers are mainly used to found cities because founding a city is pretty easy but upgrading city is hard that's where the cost comes in play but yeah you start uh, all of you start with uh, three level one dice so not level six and stuff like that because that would be a very unfair advantage against bad rolls and stuff like that so yeah basically that's the only difference uh, i apologize i was really quick to explain you how the game works that i kind of skipped on this little very important rule so yeah this is how you would start the game you would start the game with everybody on level one in their respective corners with the gog and the angel of retribution in the middle and then you will duke it out and see who is the winner so yeah basically that is that that's how you set up and that's how you play battle of gog okay so that was battle of gog and uh, as you can see the box is pretty huge because it is part of the setup i like when when they use like this uh creative when the designers do these creative things so uh, they get a plus in a creativity for me just for using the box as a setup for the game itself now the game itself uh, it is i think it is aimed toward uh, people that have little children that they want to introduce to board gaming now there is a, a strategy in this game there is a, like you can be strategic uh, and, and uh, deploy stuff you know and all that but uh, in essence if it was only a strategic game with no luck then you would completely destroy your kids but this way with the dice rolling with not knowing how many moves you will be able to make if the gog is going to move or not you get some uncertainty in those strategies and that's where the kids come into play because then they have a fair chance against you because you know there's always like some role that can mess you up a little bit and mess up with your plan of course there are cards that can mess up with other players that can help you or not help you or uh, make your life uh, way way harder so yeah there's lots of things going on here but the game is pretty simple to teach it's pretty easy to learn uh, the rules are simple the fights are very clear when you are fighting when you are attacking another city or when you are fighting another fighter you just have to have like a bigger or same number depending if you are fighting some fighters uh, if you are fighting some uh, other players fighters you will have to have bigger or the same number then you will roll the dice stuff like that but if you are attacking city you have to have three fighters of the same number that is the city so you can destroy the city and uh, yeah as i mentioned uh, there's also cards uh, the one more thing that i wanted to mention is that i really like those three different end game conditions so the game does not have uh, the set amount of rounds uh, while you are maybe pursuing um, collecting these uh, scrolls thingies the other players might be running because they get some nice rolls they might be running with their fighters to the corners because you left them on guard maybe and then they can spread out in the corners and win that way which is completely valid or you can just go and try and wipe out everybody just put your cities in a good position gather lots of resources upgrade your fighters and just go and wipe out everybody that everything is viable option and i really like that i like that all these different approaches offer different uh, strategies and challenges for all kinds of different players so yeah that is that that's the battle of gog if you are in the market for something like that if you are looking for a game that you can play play with your kids but still feel some strategic uh, thing going on but you don't want to like massacre them all over the board then the battle for gog is definitely something you are looking for uh so yeah that is that thank you all for watching thank you for spending your time to 
to to watch this video right that thank you for watching that's that and yeah please do join me next time when i will be rolling some dice and upgrading some of them and try to wipe out everybody because that's the only way to go with this game and until then pozdrav we'll be throwing some dice and uh catch fighting not catching <sighs> almost huge even though it's not thick because the components fit really nicely in this thickness so that's really stupid this is one huge box with with a really nice use with 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 with, with what you don't see that many times used 